Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a Wolfenstein 3D FPS clone in Unity and welcome to the final tutorial of this series. In this tutorial we are going to fix one or two things, we're going to take a look around our game, we're going to add in a couple of settings, we're going to build the game, we're going to test the game and then we'll talk about where we can go from there. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button and click that bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload on video game development on my channel. There is absolutely loads to see, do and learn. And if you've enjoyed this series, please feel free to check out my Patreon or YouTube memberships where you learn things like early access, exclusive content, project files and so much more. With that in mind, let's get to work. So, uh, one thing which I think we probably should have covered last tutorial uh, is the load game. Um, what will happen if we reset the game and then try loading the game? Well, nothing will actually happen. So, theoretically, we've reset the game, everything is zero. If we try loading it, all it will do is boot into that title uh, screen and then come back into the main menu. So, I guess it doesn't really matter too much to be honest but it could just be one of them things you want to change so if you do let's head into that main menu control we're going to change the dynamics of this script just a little bit uh, to actually allow us to load in this information when we uh, kind of actually click the button rather than this uh, coroutine down here so on load game what we'll do is we will take just the scene to load so we'll take that out place it here and go if and in brackets in fact we will place it just before the if because it would help wouldn't it so if in brackets load scene equals zero which it would be if we don't have a load or a, uh, to sort a save to load i should say uh then let's just put um gosh nothing happens if I can spell nothing and we'll now do an else open curly bracket and the else would be start the coroutine so resave that script so at this point if we go back into unity and press play as soon as the script is compiled if we try pressing load game nothing will happen. However, let's actually give that a real test now because we need to double check that if we get to the second level that we are able to load the game. So as we saw there, it was perfectly fine not actually uh, loading anything. So that is that for fixed. That's going to be the quickest I've ever done that level. So that has now saved because we have got it to that point. So if we press play, and try loading now, we will have resolved the bug. Perfect. So that is that sorted. Now, before we go any further, let's quickly check just a couple of things in our games. Let's go to our scenes. Let's go to the sample scene, which is the splash screen. Everything is in order here. So this scene is, I think it's fine as it is. I've not renamed any objects. You maybe could do, I guess. Uh, the level recycle will always be fine. Again, that's a simple scene. Credits, yep, that's going to be fine. Obviously, build and work and do what you need to do. Uh, level 0, zero 01, which is floor 1, all good. And second floor, again, all good. So you can imagine having all these floors now, all these different levels, and you have them in your build settings here. And let's say you're happy. You're ready to go with this. You need to know the next steps. Okay, so project saved. Let's go to edit and let's take a look in project settings. If we go to player right here, firstly, let's go with company name. So whatever you, you put your real name, I guess, uh, a pseudonym, you can put your actual company, whatever you want. So JV Game Studios. Uh, product name, let's have Wolfen Clone, simply because that's just what I called this series. Uh, icon, so let's uh, go with an icon and really it doesn't have to be an icon file, it can be absolutely anything. You could make your own customised icon if you want to. Uh, I'm just going to go with one of the textures I have to just kind of 
show you how it looks in the end. So let's go with textures and gosh, I'm just going to go with a silly face. We'll go with that as the icon and just see how that looks. So going a little bit further down, we have some settings that we can go through. And by default, most of those settings are going to be pretty straightforward. You don't need to worry about it too much. So there's our icon, as we can see, that's what our icon is going to look like when we uh, process this file. Resolution and presentation. So again, this is likely going to be full screen. Um, you can do whatever you need to do here. But again, if you're testing this for the first time, you don't need to go into too many uh, different resolutions or anything like that. But what I would recommend is checking out the supported aspect ratios. Obviously, people have different size screens. You may want to change your resolution or restrict it to certain resolutions. So 16 by 9 is the most common resolution. Obviously, that is the whole widescreen. So that's 1080 as, you, as a standard that you would know. However, it's up to you if you want to change any of that. So again, by default, a lot of that isn't really necessary. Splash image. Now, this is a little bit different. Although we've created a splash screen per se, that is not what this is. A splash image is something I will pretty much show you a little later on in this tutorial. But for now, I'm just going to put this door. What you would normally have here is a logo for your game uh, in whatever manner you need it to be. So you'd have like wolf and clone, big letters. But you'll see what this comes as out as later on this tutorial. Uh, you've got a couple of other options here if you wish to deal with them. Again, that's something that you might need to go through one by one, but never be afraid of changing some of these. Uh, here in logos, you'll see grayed out is the Unity logo. And again, splash screen there. This splash screen is not a reference to the splash screen we've created. Whenever you play a Unity game, if you're in the free version, which um, this whole tutorial is done in, so if you're not paying the subscription to Unity Technologies, you'll have a made in Unity splash screen before any other screen when you start up the application. By default, you have to have that unless you pay the subscription. Uh, further down, next we have other settings. And again, these are not massively necessary if you're creating for, uh, well, we are creating for PC, but uh, again, as a first initial test, you don't really need to worry about any of these too much. All I would recommend a lot of this is actually quite advanced. Well, I say quite advanced, but it's it's obviously not at a beginner level, but we're not at beginner level now anyway, but that's beside the point. Um, don't worry about a lot of these. They do seem a little bit confusing. Uh, generally, I've never messed around with these too much because I've never felt the need to. But if you, you know, want to have a little bit of a look into some of this stuff, Google's always a great place. Uh, going through all of this, would it, it would take quite a while. And I just don't think it is really worth the time and effort at this point, especially if you just want to build your game, test it, release it. Uh, and obviously, if we're going into VR for whatever reason, we don't need to worry about that. Uh, going along, we have iOS and Android settings, and they all follow the same kind of suit here. Uh, you don't need to worry too much about a lot of this stuff. Um, I think I did mention it earlier on in the series that in the file, build settings, you can switch platform by selecting whichever you would switch platform. Uh, one thing to note with iOS, I can't remember if I mentioned it, is you need an Apple device to actually build for an Apple device. You can't build uh, a program for, say, uh, your iPhone on a Windows PC in this manner. Uh, again, we have the settings for Android here. Once again, you could add uh, controls in for Android if you wanted to. There are tutorials out there for you to do so. Generally, this type of game isn't really aimed for mobile devices. But then again, I guess if you want to experiment, you probably could. Um, maybe put the version in there as well. I've just noticed that one. Maybe you should put 1.1 or whatever you want to do. So there's a couple of other project settings that you could go through if you wanted to. Uh, we have the quality. I think that one's going to be more important as well. Uh, obviously, you can have different types of quality. You can aim for very high. Uh, you can aim for low resolution. You can change a lot of these settings. But again, by default, a lot of these settings are really, really good. They work just fine as they are. 
uh, maybe you could play around with them if you want to. But we've been through a couple of the main things. And again, by all means, you can check out a couple of these uh, options one by one. Uh, another one, if you wanted to make, I don't know, you want to be a little bit daft or something, you could change the time scale if you wanted to. But that is probably not the best thing to do. So at this point, we've been through a lot of this stuff now. We've done a lot to this game, but we haven't really altered too many settings simply because, like I said, Unity by default offers some great settings. There's no need for us to worry too much about that. And I think that's what I like about Unity more than anything. By default, it comes to you in a very presentable manner and very easy to use. They actually have this set out really, really nice. So where do we go from here then? What do we do? So let's save our project again. At this point, we need to build and test this game because we don't know how it's going to look full screen. Sure, we could pull out our game tab and we could expand it to full screen and test. We can see now it doesn't look absolutely fantastic, but that's what testing a game is all about. So it's not going to look perfect when we build it now, but that's where we can refine it later on. So how do we build it? Let's go to File, Build Settings, and let's click on Build and Run. It will prompt you to save the game itself. So let's create a new folder. And let's call it just Wolf Game, I guess. And select Folder. And now it should start building. So you can see that that's been pressed down. It is doing something. There we go. So it's building. Now, while it's building, let's discuss where do we go from here. So we've built our game and we're about to test it. But let's say you've tested it, you've tested it, tested it, tested it, you've perfected it, it's ready to go. Where do you go from here? There are many websites out there where you don't even have to pay to actually upload. Uh, you've got things like Game Jolt, you've got places like Ichio, where you can actually upload your game for people to generally play and have a good time with and probably give you good feedback on the game itself. I use it to myself quite a lot because I feel that's a good community where there are tons and tons of games to check out and play. And you, if uh, you do follow my channel, you've probably seen a lot of various different gameplays from various different games on Itch.io. So if you do decide to release your game, I would recommend that one. And like I say, if not, somewhere like Game Jolt is a good place to kind of connect with other developers as well. So through this series, we've gone from an absolute beginner to, I'd say, a pretty intermediate level at this point. We've been through certain bits of development which have uh, you wouldn't have known um, through it many, many hours ago when you started this series. I think this, the entire series has probably run for about nine hours now. So in the space of nine hours, if you followed the series, we have gone from um, an absolute beginner to that intermediate level. There are many places that you could go further from here. I mean, you could go a lot further and you could bring in vehicles. You could bring in more advanced AI. Uh, the AI that we have already created for our enemies, you could quite easily use those same mechanics for more enemies, bigger enemies, tougher enemies, more mobile enemies that move around. It's actually really easy to do that based on the mechanics we have. Same with guns. If you want to bring in a shotgun or something like that, you could use the exact same mechanics that we've already used uh, within the game itself. Um, going into the coding side of all this, a lot, I mean, look at this code that we've written. At the beginning of this series, if you were brand new to Unity, you wouldn't have any idea what any of this meant. However, at this point, we know what this means now. So this is a good example of learning. So you could just use these scripts. You could, you know, you've, you've learned enough here to really build on what you've learned over the last nine hours. And quite frankly, I would absolutely love to see where a lot of these games uh, turn out. I want to see what you guys have done, how you guys have made it, because I absolutely love seeing what's made. So the game has now built up. And firstly, we can see right there, there is that splash image that we were presented with before. So when it referred to that splash, it meant this image right here. It didn't actually mean our splash screen that we had. Uh, here we can see that we have our screen resolution, we have it windowed, there's our graphics, display, and there's all our inputs. So we have now built this game and it's ready to run. And if I go into the folder where it's stored, we can see 
our wolf game folder is right there and there is our icon that little funny face that is our icon so our game is now ready to run and play i'm just going to turn my volume down because i think this might get a little bit loud i'm not quite sure but we'll soon see so this is the point now where we play and test our game we're gonna see i know we're gonna see some bugs we're gonna see some errors we're gonna see some glitches don't worry about that if this is your first time playing and testing you will see them because there's no way that you'll have been able to build a perfect game without testing like this so that's that splash screen that i said that we cannot escape from because we have the uh, free version we don't pay the subscription so far everything is looking just fine but there's our first glitch so that's something we would have to fix we can see that this should be here so let's test out our credits okay so there's another one that we just have to fix it's always good to test a lot of this stuff out in full screen in the actual application itself so really all you would need to do with that is just change where the animation goes uh, and let's go new game and let's try this out and see how it looks okay so already we can see there are a couple of bugs and glitches things are not appearing as they should be our ammo is missing but other than that everything seems to be okay seems to be at least so looking at it full screen now it's okay i'm happy with our results here so the last thing I want to quickly test before we go further is how it looks right at the end. Let's have a quick look. Okay, so that looks just fine. That's perfect. Okay, so there do appear to be... Thank you, Avast. There do appear to be a couple of bugs, but again, we kind of uh, determined that when we pulled the game view out and expanded and things disappeared. So what we can do is to at least find that bug slowly pull this out and see why things disappear why do things disappear so it looks like things stretch a little too far and cover things a little bit too much so that's actually quite easy to fix if that is the worst bug that we have then we've done a really good job so far so i'm going to quickly go to my canvas uh, let's go to our ui panel and all that really comes down to is how uh, a lot of the um, actual panels are set out so really or I think probably all we would need to do is change it from stretch like so to this version there so just work out all of these fix them all up by setting the anchoring positions in whatever way you need to you might not have that error you might have already fixed that by how you've set your game up that's all good uh, let's have a quick look how that looks now okay so it's still a little bit buggy okay let's see if we can alter that I'm trying to see why is that like so so well let's just have it let's have it like that at least that way we don't see too many problems but we should be able to see everything in due course there we go so yep that's all it comes down to just a little bit of modification on the canvas obviously you would spend a lot more time than what i have on this you would perfect it so that is the end that that is pretty much everything i can teach you from um this series now it's now in your hands to take everything you've learned and advance it further you've learned everything there is to know about this it's it's all down to you guys now and like i said i re i would really love to see what you guys have created from this uh whether you put it on itch.io or game or something let me know so i just want to thank you for sticking with me for the past nine hours or so how long these tutorials have gone on for i'm sure it's just over nine hours and yeah don't forget to subscribe click that bell icon because there's loads of more stuff uh, on my channel there's just loads to see and loads to learn guys Thank you so much for watching this series. See you around.